Adrian, the lead producer of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Today we're going to check out some gameplay from our Gardens and Graveyards multiplayer mode on our Driftwood Shores map. Now, Gardens and Graveyards is a little bit like Battlefield's Rush mode and Conquest mode, remixed together but with Plants vs. Zombies flavor. To start off, we're following the zombies here emerging from Dr. Zomboss's mountain lair on the attack to the first plant garden. <laughs> Now to capture a phase, the zombies must stand near the garden and raise their tombstone. The more zombies that are in the garden area, the faster the tombstone raises. Once it's fully raised, the base is captured. Now once a base is captured, the battle is going to shift to the next garden objective. Now one of the key zombie strategies in Gardens and Graveyards is the use of teleporters. Now the zombies are on the attack for the arena base here. Now the soldier is using his rocket jump to get to the elevated position over the base. Gives him some space. Looks like he's gonna get chomped. <laughs> Teamwork is crucially important in the Gardens of Graveyard. Here the soldier is going to be reviving his teammate as he continue on in the push to capture the marina base. Starting to build turrets and teleporters. Now, those turrets will defend the teleporter he's about to build here, providing defenses for the zombies that are coming out of the teleporter and keeping it active for an easy attack on those base. Yeah. 
To finish off, we're going to give you a sneak peek of the final objective on Driftwood Shores, the assault on the Mega Flower Lighthouse. The zombies must propel themselves across the water using cannons and dodge the incoming planned anti-air fire. To see the rest, pick up a copy of Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare on the Xbox One or Xbox 360 on February 18th. Thanks for watching.